I love this. Okay, this meeting is being recorded. Okay. Yeah. Um. Welcome everyone to our student tech talk. We've been on pause for a bit, but we're excited to continue the series with Josh again, giving up pretty time to talk about tech for collective action. That is going to be super interesting given this first intro slide that you can see. Um, <laughs> for more context, uh, we started student tech talks during quarantine um, just because we believe that students have so much to say and are doing some of the, I don't know, the most impactful and largest like, initiatives that we've seen. And we think that this is a good way of fostering community and having peers like teach from each other as opposed to webinars that you just kind of sit through and don't really connect with anyone. So um, we encourage you to use the chat or turn on video and just like react and feel free to share thoughts about the talk and feel free to add us in social media if you want to tweet about it. The talk will be recorded and will also be posted after. Um, yeah. Bryn, do you want to read the intro? Okay, so um, welcome guys to um, our today's Tech Talk. So um, our speaker for today is Josh Valentin. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah, okay. you know what? It's anyway. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to read uh, the description about Josh. Josh Valentin is an 18-year-old freshman at De La Salle University, Manila, taking a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science. In their brief, in their brief in the usage of personal capacities to forward social change, they have constantly involved themselves in activism using writing and arts. A member of La Salle organizations inside, inside and outside the university, such as the Malate Literary Folio and Anakbay and Buto Cruz, which are critical voices in speaking up for human rights and democracy. They are continually active in forwarding collective action that aims to bridge the youth in their community. They are also involved in other youth-led publications, such as ibota.ph and Of the People, using digital platforms to encourage social change. They are also involved in spiritual formation inside the university, as Assistant Vice President of Creatives at RC Life Taft. They personally believe in the power of the youth in bringing revolutionary change and will continuously love and serve the people towards this. So everybody, give it up for Josh Valentin. Uh, <laughs> hi, okay. Oh my gosh, I am now about to speak, wow. Hi, so I haven't given a talk in like months. Please bear with me. This portion is going to be short because I, I promise it will be short. Promise, promise, promise. Um, so uh, I'd like to encourage y'all to ask me questions lang. It's fine. Guys, don't be shy. I do not bite. Uh, I am... Okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you guys, by the way, for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. I'm so... Uh, hype to do this. I do not know why I have the adrenaline for this. So before we start, whoa, okay. Whoa, wait, what the heck? Okay, wait, I'm gonna play. Okay, fine. Okay, so this will be divided into four parts. Hold on, let me fix. Wow, why didn't I fix this a while ago? Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, let me press play. So this will be divided into four short parts. So because I asked like what was like the main or usual questions asked during this talk and it can be answered and I'll try answering most of it in four parts. Part one, which is it finally took GMA news and a pair of annoying happy birthday glasses to get out what I do. Part two, okay, I'm a sucker for serving others. So what? I'm a mercury in cancer. Uh, three, the main event, uh, activism in the time of coronavirus. And fourth, Conclusion, no virus is stopping us. So, hi. So who am I? <laughs> why was I asked to give this talk? I do not know either. Why am I qualified to do these things? I do not know why people approach me, but let's... Let, thank you for trusting me, by the way. 
you are trusting a Leo to do this. This is, hmm, that is a risk to make. So, hi, so, who, who am I? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm already laughing at the comic sans. This is so bad. Anyways, so, uh, who am I? So, hi, I am Josh. I am a Cancer Leo cusp. I am a Libra moon. Aries rising, Gemini Venus, Sagittarius Mars. You make your conclusions on that. That's on that's on you guys. If you guys ever like read birth charts or anything, uh, slam book fave musicians, uh, Mitski, Neutral Milk Hotel. So you know I've been sad. Um, I am a political science major without any majors yet. Like seriously, I haven't taken a single major yet. Our our uh, calendar is whack. So uh, I am. Studying right now in the De La Salle University, and I came from Zubel, uh, La Salle Zubel. So, make your own conclusions on that because I still don't know. I still do not know what that entails me to. Like, am I a dude pare? Because I know people don't say that. People don't say that. So, make your own conclusions on that. So, I am a resident, yeah, yeah, I am a resident youth activist and writer. So, fun fact, I actually came from Kabataan Party to Cavite. Then I swapped, uh, changed, changed courts to Anak Bay and Vito Cruz. Like, it literally took me a second. Because uh, when you switch, like, chapters, I was supposed to be part of KPL, Vito Cruz. But then somebody asked me, hey, do you want to join Anak Bay? And I was like, yep. <laughs> and I was like, no, no hesitation. I was like, hell yeah. Come on, let's do this. So, yeah, you can also find me... In Malatu Literary Folio, I am a poetry staffer. And yeah, doing a writing residency there. It sounds cool, I guess. Yeah, it does sound cool. Yeah. Uh, also, I am part of RC Life staff. So, yes, I am a Jesus person. It is surprising to say, but yeah, I am a Jesus person. Yeah. Amen. So, I am also a content creator at Off the People. There. They just started building this like this year. It's a great initiative, by the way. It's it's so amazing seeing seeing people younger than you create so much amazing work and writing. So check them out, by the way. Uh, of the people is starting to get traction because they they create like really challenging and very thought provoking posts that even DBS trolls would like to bash them. <laughs> so. Check them out. They got featured on Move.ph. And then uh, I was also involved with Iboto.ph. So uh, I helped do social media coverage for the elections. And when I tell you I had the worst breakdown while typing out these election results, it is real. It is real. My friend can be a witness for that. She was like telling me the numbers of like these Trapo politicians who suck at their job but won anyway. So she's like, oh, he has like 87,365 votes. And then I'd be on my laptop like, 87,395 votes. So ayun, I, I would get stressed a lot. And yeah, but it was fun though. It was fun though. It was a good shtick. It was a good, it was a good moment. It was a cultural reset. And lastly, ayun, uh, I'm still single. That sucks. I would not like to elaborate on that. That is sad, surprising, disappointing. I would like to move on. Anyways, <laughs> so part one. <laughs> no, I still hate this pitch so much. But let's get to part one. Uh, what what is Anak Bay and Vito Cruz? So actually, that is that is me. Uh, it's a recent picture. This is a real photo. Trolls got into that picture so fast. Um, so I am, yes, I am from Anak Bay and Vito Cruz. And context, I am, I forgot to put it on the bio, but I am Anak Bay and Vito Cruz's educational discussion officer. So you see this, even tiny brain people like me, even small brain people like me, okay, can, can be educational discussion officers. So, so what is, what is it? What is it? You know, what? What exactly is Anak Bay and Vito Cruz? So, okay. So, she's the most comprehensive youth organization in the LSU. So, um, so flex ko lang. Uh, Anak Bay and Vito Cruz is comprehensive because it, 
it is a youth it is a youth organization that tries to unite youth workers, youth farmers, youth fishermen, youth students. So you don't just see anak bayan chapters in universities like DLSU, uh, UP, UST. You also see them in in farmer hacienderos. Like uh, there's one chapter of anak bayan that is solely composed of uh, farmer youth. Uh, it is anak bayan lupang ramos. So it's near me. So so usually, uh, most if not all members come from yeah come from the hacienda. So they they usually campaign for farmers' rights, uh, agricultural things. So Anak Bayan, with its broad comprehensive unities, it aims to arouse, organize, and mobilize the youth towards struggle for national democracy. I'll get to what that is later. But yeah, in DLSU, we try to uh, organize students, faculty, uh, staff, and uh, actually, we actually also organize like future fresh or freshmen. So we actually have incoming freshmen who are members already. So wow, we are advanced in thinking. <laughs> so yeah, our main goal is to, is to, you know, um, give the people, <laughs> give the people an avenue to. To find their place in like, because that's usually like the main dilemma. Like, usually a lot of people would, especially like, uh, Lasallian youth, who would have the means and opportunities to get as much information as possible. But the problem is what what comes next or like what happens afterwards. So with that, another by Peter Cruz becomes like a, uh, how how do I say this? A medium to do that. So, how do we do that? How do we give the youth a platform to serve the people? So, first, uh, we provide avenues for political discussions. So, that's either offline, online, anywhere. We we go room to room in different uh, classrooms. Sometimes we have professors that we're friends with. So, we'd be like, "Sir, can we get like..." 20 minutes of your time and then I actually did this uh, for my blog and then our prof was like hey, does anyone know this guy and then everyone's like no 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 we don't know this guy so basically yeah sometimes we invade classes we we do room to rooms we sometimes we go around like the campus uh, try and make chica to people like we're really on ground the man when it comes to political discussions because we believe that that theory is important in building practice. And next, uh, we also gather the sentiments of the Lasallian youth to help amplify it. So usually Anak Bayan Vito Cruz is one with most student campaigns, such as for example, uh, tuition fee increase, uh, Anak Bayan played a big role big role in helping the Salian orgs, uh, student council members uh, get educated as to why these tuition hikes happen, uh, how can we lobby to the administration in order to stop it. Because usually, naman, uh, DLSU students have a positive and progressive like mindset, even without our org. So basically, for example, uh, the, our student government actually lobbied for a 0% tuition fee increase, but then it just needed a little bit of pushing because the admin was getting, was getting uh, pressury or threatening over the student government to change their minds and to have a compromise instead. But in the end, yeah, the students won. So next year, we do not have a tuition fee increase. And that's, that's a win for the Lasallian youth, eh? So, uh, lastly, yeah, we bridge Lasallian youth together to create a pro- progressive broad unity. Uh, Anak Bayan helps uh, clinch organizations, student, student media outlets, uh, religious organizations inside DLSU to help, to help like, change, change their minds on something, convince them to to attend educational discussions, create statements. So by bridging the Lasallian youth together, we are able to unite them into one cause, and that is the struggle to uphold their human rights and to protect our national sovereignty. That's two of the basic things in the in a national democratic struggle. I'll get to that 
pala soon. So, part two. Hopefully, that was a clear... Hopefully, that was a clear uh, intro or like uh, toe dip into what Anak Bayan does, specifically in the Vito Cruz chapter. So, part two. So, why do I do this? So, yeah. We live in a society. I agree. We live in a society. Uh, and yeah, usually a lot of people like uh, say that that live in a society stuff, especially like edgelords on the internet. Like, I don't get it. Okay. But yeah, we live in a society. Pero, however, yeah, we live in a society because yes, we live in a society. So what? So in, or, in order to like bring that optimism of like uh, how do I phrase this? How, how do we make people more optimistic in being being oh no, uh, being progressive people? How do we bring that into our community or our universities? So with that, I wanted to become a student activist because I believe in in the youth, wow! I believe in us, guys. I believe in us. I know. I know we can do so much. We have so, so much potential. Honestly, uh, these boomers might discredit us sometimes, but we do have our own, our own like pros. We have our own cons, but mostly our pros overweight our cons. So we we really are capable in bringing change to Philippine society, and history can back that up. Okay, uh, our national heroes. Two of our main national heroes are youth. So, I don't know, man. You tell me. So, <laughs> so if that's possible, what more in our time right now where we have so much resources on us right now and we have so much capabilities because of these resources like technology and all that. And, yeah. So, yeah. I Listen, let me use this slide to call out boomers please do not <laughs> baby i do not care about your follow the president claro and eco fascist statements because it is possible for the youth to change systems because yeah history has backed it up uh most of our revolutions our uprisings and our uh, usual events that topple the system are usually led by the youth so we can say that for the Philippine Revolution of 1896, the second propaganda movement, most of those people are still in, in the youth sector uh, in recent times. Mm, first quarter storm, uh, one of the uprisings that led to people, the people power movement were led by students. Most, if not all, were led by students and youth. So... What else? Uh, EDSA too. A lot of youth were also involved in there. And, and until now, mostly these, these movements are sparked by youth, by youth activists, by youth, uh, youth involved in writing, youth involved in the agriculture sector, uh, working class youth. So, hindi, hindi natin matitigilan or we cannot stop the youth from wanting to change the system because they know it's wrong. And that's a term we call yung paninibagong hubog. Or it's like, uh, think of it as like an epiphany in order for you to realize, oh, wait, I can do something to change the world. And in order to bring revolutionary ideas. So, and also, it's not just like, people who are conditioned to become progressive and everything. Like, no one is born progressive. We all start from something. And that's why I always champion champion? Wow. That's a big word. I always like, tell people to not be to not be uh, don't be that harsh when it comes to convincing DDS relatives DDS uh, people or like apolitical people because uh, yeah we're all just we're all Filipinos I know it sounds cheesy but yeah we're all Filipinos and lastly we are not the enemy because the enemy is what the ruling class wow so that's why I I like telling people that nah, don't be harsh on people don't don't force them that much for hate you're wrong you're cancelled that's why that's why I kind of don't like cancel culture because if 
I got cancelled in 2016, if I got cancelled in 2016, listen, there would be... <sighs> Next slide. This is what happened between 2016 me and 2020 me. So, in 2016, I would like to admit that I was a DDS during 2016. I am sorry. This is why I tell people, don't be harsh. Don't be... Don't... Uh, take it easy. Take it step by step. Know their commonalities. Um, when you when you convince people that there's a human rights violation thing happening right now, there's economic crisis ha happening right now. You gotta do it simply, especially if they're apolitical, centrist, DDS, or anything. Basta, basta, if they're not progressive, take it easy. Don't cancel them because in 2016. <coughs> It pains me. It pains me to say that I was a DDS before. So I would like to admit it. People change. People change. That's basically uh, one of the main tenets of dialectical materialism. So the people change talaga. Because in 2016, I was like, <laughs> Dumterte can kill naman, bro. Sabi naman sa Bible, you can kill the drug addicts kasi salat sila. So I really, I really thought they could kill drug addicts because the Bible said so. Okay. That was 2016. That was four years ago. And yeah. And at that time, I cracked under pressure during one of, <laughs> one of my Filipino performance tasks. I think Bianco was my classmate on this. But we had to do a monologue for one character in Noli Mi Tangere. And even me growing in a Filipino household, when you get exposed to Konyo culture, for about two to three years, it is over. It is over for your language. It is over for your language reception. Linguistics can still cannot answer why the the Konyo uh, dialect exists. So, yeah, in 2016, I was this uh, English area person, and and as well as my politics, it was also whack. Because right, the third and Trump won. Uh, almost at the same like uh, time frame, like only a few months yung gap. So I was like, <laughs> don't compare Duterte and Trump. Duterte is better because he has political experience. Eh. No, honey, you know. And it took me a while to understand that. It takes a while for people to understand things about like political systems and stuff. So yeah, it's 2016 me. And yeah, I also had ugly skin and looked, oh no, <laughs> I looked really bad in freshman year. And look at me now. I still look pretty bad, but at least I'm organized. <laughs> so, so yeah, it took like four years to change my views on like what religion and politics, how they intertwine and all and how we can make religion something that is not an opium of the masses according to Karl Marx yeah it took me four years to realize that Duterte and Trump were the same thing it took me four years but yeah it's baby steps and and yeah if before I could crack under pressure now I can joke to the I can joke about the police in front of them guys promise join a mass organization it will boost your confidence i do not know why it happened but yeah in the june 12 manyanita or like the protests that happened all across the country i somehow made a joke in fr front of the police about them being akab and all like i was like guys chill you know what you have no you have no right to arrest people. This isn't a rally. This is a party. And then I was like wearing these hill, like crazy glasses and all. Like that said, happy birthday. And like I stole them from my sister. I am so sorry to her. I have to do it for our country, girl. I have to do it for our country. So yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say here is like, it's okay for like people, you know, be patient around people because that's important. It uh, all of us, even like really apolitical and apathetic people, we have different stages of growth. Sometimes it takes us secondhand empathy, like empathizing with the marginalized, to be like, oh, I get that. That's why they're saying junk terrible now. Because what if I'm in that position? Uh, sometimes it takes people uh, 
real life situations that affect them directly for them for them to realize that maybe Duterte was a bad idea. Like so really takes us different uh different ways to learn. So so yun, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the reason why I became a student activist or the reason why I wanna do this is because yeah, I wanna wanna help in my little ways on how to uh how to make people understand more what it takes for them to change the world because everyone has the capacity to change the world. And the reason why we aren't we aren't in that stage yet is because we haven't realized our potential and yeah, with the current uprisings different uprisings in the world right now we're on that stage where we're realizing hey something's wrong (laughs) so we're in that hey something's wrong stage so it's up to us right now to really be patient in educating and mobilizing people into into taking actions on systemic failures and that's the point i wanted to make in this slide and yeah (laughs) no one is a hopeless case but the ruling class, Jeneline. So, yeah. No one really is a hopeless case because even me, in 2016, I was a hopeless case. Now, um, I guess, hopeless case mentally. <laughs> no! But yeah. Okay. So, yeah. This is the point I wanted to make. No one is a hopeless case. Uh, we've just started. We've just begun. There's so much work to do. And we should pinpoint our anger and frustration towards a planned destruction made by the ruling class. So we all know, we're starting to realize now na these systems weren't made by accident and it takes a fascist a fascist leader really to make us see the, the evil systems that we have right now and how massive failures they are to our society and how so much people are marginalized just because someone just wanted to make a lot of money. So... Let's support, educate, and organize one another. Peace and love. Okay, I'm, it's cheesy, I know, but that is where we're going at. I'm, that is really cheesy. I know we're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be like, let's fight the system now. And but I'm here like, I'm baby. Come on, let's let's all uh join hands together, kumbaya, and all that. But yeah. Uh, how do I say this? Mm, let's all be like soft to each other, but angry and like hyped against the ruling class. Okay, peace and love, guys. And yeah, we used to do these things physically. There was a time. There was a time where we used to do uh, organizing people physically. There was a time where we held forums, educational discussions. There's a time where we held rallies, mobilizations. And then, and then the coronavirus happened and most of our plans got ruined. So yeah, uh, the coronavirus sucked. And I mean, it's a good and bad thing. I guess there were a lot of plans that was supposed to happen, didn't happen, and that's fine. But COVID actually helped expose, like, what kind of failure the administration of the D-word, um, Duterte, has, has done to our country. So, like, with that, uh, COVID actually helped expose these, like, uh, inherent systemic failures because I think... Most of us can see that this wasn't a problem when Duterte came in. This is also a problem during past presidencies and all. And it's all inherent. And we're all still suffering even though there, there's COVID or not. Or like if COVID didn't exist, we'd still be suffering even in future generations. Like you see the, the depth that we have in like different banks and different countries. It's concerning. I am scared to look at numbers. I hate numbers. This is why I'm a political science major. No, I'm just kidding. We still have numbers there, I think. But yeah, uh, not funny. COVID, you're not funny. This isn't a joke. Uh, almost cried. And yeah, however, <laughs> there is an expose that COVID brought to us 
that oh my gosh Duterte is what a fascist and he doesn't care about healthcare damn such a bad president I think we should ask the guy wink wink so yeah so we're now faced with the main event what are activists doing right now in time of coronavirus in order to you know because we can't do most of these things we can't do the stuff we we did uh before covid happened and before the lockdowns um and there were yeah there were butchered plans so what what's the workaround what's the workaround so yay part three this is where the tech stuff come in this is where it comes in guys promise so so yeah, uh, with our chapter naman, usually we haven't stopped doing on-ground mass work. So right now, since most of most of the LSU students are online, most of us most of us have access like computers and all. Most of, but not all, stop online classes now, I guess. But yeah, uh, most of us have access to like stuff like discord we have stable internet connection and to cater to to most of the pop- population that does this we do online mass work and it's, it's a good way to reach pe- people because we've actually gotten more membership applications for this like a lot of people signed up more recently and yeah i think it's because because like a lot of us are acquainted or like a lot of us know stuff about the online world so that's why we also prioritize online mark aside from the underground mass work for example uh each chapter really has a community nearby them of course since we're all like in barangays and all so our job in in the different chapters is to continue bringing help to the communities we belong in so in Vita Cruz, we we have two communities. So we help our communities in Leverisa, which is near the DLSU campus. Uh, it's actually just behind it. So we do we do relief operations there. Uh, we also help out in donations regarding the barangays inside Intramuros. So we also do relief work there, and as well as 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 well. There's also like real life mobilizations and indignations that are happening because, yeah, we still think that the physical presence or the power of numbers thing, it it still works. And with social distancing and all that, uh, social distancing with PPEs, we are able to mass up. Uh, Five thousand people uh, actually went to the mobilization during Independence Day, and yeah, that says a lot about how these on-ground on ground mass ups or on-ground mass works are still relevant even though we are forced, basically forced to shift to online stuff. It's still important to really go on-ground because uh, yeah, the Philippines right now, not a lot of us has like the good access to internet. We don't have good access to like Wi-Fi and stuff. Even I do not have that that good access because I literally had to beg my mom to to bring me to this house because there's fast internet here and in the house I'm currently in there is no Wi-Fi cable and anything. I am not a tech lord, but yeah, internet bad. So so yeah, we not a lot of Filipinos have access to internet. That's why with online mass work happening, that that gives you like a reach to most of the community. But you also have to not forget the equal importance of doing on-ground mass work. So that just entails to helping the community, uh, educating them, not just like, don't just like give them stuff because the relief doesn't only come with like donations and all that. We also like give them the context on like, hey, why is this happening right now in our country? Why, why do we rely mostly on donations and relief? Why is the social amelioration program a flop? So, so yeah, they're both equally important and they're both crucial in a time where we need to unite the Filipino people in order to make them realize that, hey, 
Duterte bad. <laughs> Basically, Duterte bad. So, what does ABVC do? Or anak bayan Vita Pierce do? So, I'm going to get into the specifics of what's happening right now with tech. So, social media usually is our is our home court. So, we usually usually our campaign committee people, they're usually the, they're, they're, they're usually the ones who make the, the statements you see if you've encountered an anak bayan page on facebook or on twitter and you see these long statements filipino or in english if you if you look at the anak bayan usa chapters like they they have like these long texts explaining everything uh that's one of the main that's one of the main ways anak bayan can reach not only to the Lasallian community but as well as other communities so statement releases uh, in response to current issues. So for example, uh, the rise of fake accounts was really concerning because there was a pattern in which everyone who had a fake account uh, showed opposition against the government. So we, uh, Anak Bayan was quick on that to release responses, provide, provide uh, protection for those who had fake accounts by linking a report system from a youth alliance because there's a youth alliance called youth act now against tyranny so they they provided like this this google form in which you can report the number of fake accounts you had uh anak by and vita cruz also uh they also partnered with the one lasal for human rights and democracy which is a alliance of lasallian organizations so we teamed up in order to create a google form that would help report fake accounts easily specifically in the lasallian community so there's that uh consistent constant consistent wow that i am mixing words i am mixing words i'm a dj or something okay so we also do constant pakat or pakat which is like a term used to like uh go out into the world and and immerse basically like give out flyers uh talk to students about the current political situation but we can't do that we can't do that like right now since we're all quarantined in our homes so we do online pakating or yeah, the the constant invitations like, hey, you want to join this? Do you want to join an educational discussion? I think you might be interested in it. So we invite people inside and outside the DLSU community. This is open for everyone. We can surely link you to chapters near you if, uh, if Vito Cruz isn't the chapter nearest to you. So yeah, we're our membership committee is always on the on the go, recruiting people, uh, asking them if they're interested in orientations, if they want to learn more. So yeah, and for my committee, yeah, yeah we actually have fun online classes. <laughs> online classes can be fun, guys. When the one teaching you has no brain, uh, two brain cells in their heads. So yeah, we actually have like online classes in the form of various discussions and these discussions are actually open for all so not just like dlsc students they can be like students around the taft area usually and it can be anyone uh so yeah we have these educational discussions like like weekly so everyone is open to join yeah so i i not this part okay Discord. Let's talk about Discord. So, mainly context. The reason why uh, Discord w was the sudden like mode of mode of conversation and mode of discussion place was because Discord was found to be more safe than Zoom. So, so yeah, a lot of chapters in Anakbayan, including the national chapter, we do have an Anakbayan national Discord wherein. It's all the chapters in one server. So so yeah, we found that Discord is actually safer than Zoom and uh we can use Discord in order to uh make security things better. Like for example, no hijacking of 
Zoom calls because those happen. We've seen them in local government units. I am not going to name the, the local government unit, but yeah, a lot of trolls, uh, it's either good trolls or bad trolls, usually usually can hijack Zoom, Zoom calls. So it's easier in Discord to monitor people. So, uh, and like who gets in, do we, do we think this guy is safe? Is he sketchy? So yeah. So server tour. Okay, I'm so excited for this. So this is how our server is divided. So um, first we have an EV schedules channel. This is where we, us- we usually have a pub mat publication material it's like a tiny poster thing come on uh we we use canva for these because it's like ooh, it's it's kind of easy it's kind of accessible so we use canva to make these like simple publications in order to like alert people about the e- the educational discussions or eds happening during that week uh, and then we post them on ed schedule so it uh so ensured that everyone can see it uh, it will not be over overpiled by the uh, by the people entering the server because Discord does that like oh blah 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 enter the server so that usually happens on welcome and the alerts happen there too uh, members members of different committees can blast their announcements there and if it since this is EB related or educational discussion related. Uh, Usually, most of the announcements are ED related. So, we also have the ABX KPL VC General Assembly. So, Anak Bayan Vito Cruz and KPL DLSU, we, we work together. We work together as mass orgs. So, we usually have monthly General Assembly. So, everyone. Everyone gets to meet each other. Everyone gets to unite their plans, their assessments of of what happened last month in this in this voice text and voice channel. So there all there there is also like a time or portion in these assemblies where there are breakout sessions between uh, committee members. So that's why there are separate voice channels per committee. So that's when we plan stuff. That's when we assess things. Like, is this okay? Is this good? So, so yeah, we we have a general assembly thing to make sure that no one uses that and no one uses it for anything else. And we don't use the educational discussion channels, which you can see at your right. So the ED or end or orientation channels contain uh, the the chat boxes and voice channels used used to communicate during EDs. Uh, so during these discussions, uh, one should yeah listen to the voice channel. Uh, the you, the instru usually or the instructor instru. Wow, shortened terms. I'm going to use instru and ED a lot because nasana yung don. Okay, so yeah, the instru usually. Uh, has control over most things and we usually have one person that from the educational discussion uh, committee that usually guards the server or the voice channel to make sure that everyone's still getting it everyone's still understanding what's what's happening because usually it's information overload uh context yeah we were talking about this a while ago, Bianca. You heard na there's a six uh, discussions usually take six hours, and yeah, sometimes yeah that that is true. That happens. That happens sometimes. So we usually have checkers who who make sure that everyone's still listening. So that's why there's a voice. Wait, no, sorry. There's a text channel there because we usually type in questions like, "Hey, react to this if you're still listening," or hey, do you agree with this? Like, send a reaction if you think this is this is true or you agree with it. So there's still, like, interaction and it's not just a one-sided thing where it's like a podcast. Because uh, we don't want to uh, make it seem like it's a one-sided thing. We want to make sure, like, it's the real thing. Like, we're in person talking. We're vibing. That's why um, some of our instruments usually turn on video so it doesn't feel like a phone call uh and some of us like make uh 
make do different ways on how to make everyone attending the discussions more comfortable and make them feel like they're not attending a discussion but they're getting the same information so we're trying to switch things up i'll get to that in a bit so for roles uh some of these servers uh some of some of the servers don't have roles uh that are simple as this because uh for example the AB National or yung Anak Bayan National, they have like really complicated rules, and we're like, oh, sorry, I we didn't install the me, the me six bot on Discord so we could make it complicated. But we made like a uh, simple, simple rules lang in order to access these uh text channels and voice channels. So for there are rules for ABVC members there. Are, Roles for KPL, DLSU members. There are also uh, roles for officers uh, in ABVC who have, who have more access. For example, like uh, booting people, blocking them. So the members get like, if if you're a member, of course, you can access these orientation channels and all. Uh, for officers and other Vito Cruz mass orgs, they also have the same power as administrator roles. So, because yes, we have that trust. And for visitors coming from other mass orgs or just visitors in general who just wanted to take a discussion once, they get a visitor's role, uh, which which I think bars them from some of the ED, ED voice, voice channels because we usually delegate one voice channel for like public EDs or like member EDs because we had the situation once where we thought we were getting trolled or like uh, there were intruders. So yeah, that's why the friends or visitors role exists because of that one traumatic moment where all of us were new to Discord were suddenly like, wait, are these trolls? Are these like intruders? So yeah, we delegate these roles, man. That's why they're really vague. It's because, hey, we're new here and we don't want to overcomplicate things. So, uh, okay, so what do we do? What do we do in these? How do we use Discord to uh, uh, troubleshoot things? How do we use Discord to uh, make sure people are still listening? So first, reacting. You can see in this reacting part, where they're reacting to presentation slides. And some that's how I work around bad internet sometimes because... I really have bad internet, guys. Promise, on God, my internet has to be one of the worst things to ever happen to mankind. That's why sometimes we ask other people to stream the presentation when, uh, while one is uh, instructing, uh, the other person or the checker is the one going live and streaming the presentation. But sometimes uh, things happen wherein even the uh, the checker can't stream or go live because of like internet problems. So I screenshot the presentations. Oh my gosh, I remember this day like it was yesterday. Uh, it's so hard, but screenshotting the presentation, sending it to the e- to the discussion chat, and then like asking everyone, "Hey, if you see it, if you read it, uh, react to it." So that's why you see like the various reactions there. It's because while I'm discussing, I have to make sure that, oh, everyone see what I'm discussing? Because sometimes it really is hard to follow, especially if you're in DLSU, we're in the language. The language usually isn't uh, primarily in Filipino or a lot of people struggle with it. So even me as an instructor, I struggle with Tagalog. So I have to make sure that my students or the people who are attending these discussions aren't having a hard time either. Uh, so that's how we use reacting or sending pictures. Uh, sometimes they send memes too while discussing, like memes that are related to the thing, the, the slide happening on stream. We also have feedback or vibe checks. So these vibe che- <laughs> I hate it. Why did I call it vibe check? But okay. So we have these vibe checks wherein... For example, we're in the middle of a discussion and then I, I'd suddenly like ask like, hey, what's one sentence 
that that helps you describe what you've just learned. So we usually do do these vibe checks uh, during the end of a portion of the discussion. If it's a long discussion, we're in. We're really dissecting everything. Uh, for this discussion, I asked, like, because we discussed about like the role of women farmers in forwarding the national democratic struggle, and then I asked them, like, okay, what after this discussion or this portion, did your perception of what a strong independent woman change? So I asked them, na parang, hey, what is a strong independent woman for you? So. That's like a simple, like one sentence thing. I don't ask them for essays. They can do essays if they can, in a short span of time. But I do, I do give them like, hey, one sentence. Uh, that's good. So I can still check on you if you're okay, if you're digesting something. And then usually you do that as a springboard to expound on things. So for example, if I'm lazy in discussing something. I usually ask people <laughs> life hack, life hack and teaching things. Ask, ask, ask your students like what you think they know about the thing. So that becomes like a springboard, and that also while it acts as a springboard, and for you to add on what they think they know, uh, it's also a good way to check on them if they're doing fine, because sometimes these discussions can take a toll on your brain, and that's. That's something I've related to. Sometimes it it really takes takes so much brain capacity. As a person with two brain cells, as a person with two brain cells, I cannot intake that much information. And I'm saying this as I teach things, but like yeah, sometimes I have a hard time taking in information and stuff like mental breaks, like a short break, uh, where we talk about. What we've learned, so we use that in order, yeah, to give that headspace, check if everyone's okay. We we're trying to do more icebreakers or like more unrelated vibe checks. So trying to ask like, hey, anong kinain yo? Like, are you guys eating right now while we're having this discussion? So this this one time, so someone instructed an ED and she was like, guys, wait, I have to stop. I have to, I'm, I'm eating like, dinuguan ba yon? Like, I think she was eating dinuguan or champorada. She was like, okay, wait lang, stop. Can you take over this ED? Because I'm going to eat champorado. It's kind of hot. So, we usually Ooh, do vibe Josh. checks that are related. Um, unrelated. Josh. Ah. Short note lang. Um, we're running over, so like wrap up because we don't have to Q&A pa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Lang, I'm, I'm, I'm sk- tapos, yeah. yeah, I'm almost done. Wow. See, when I say this is going to take a while, it doesn't happen. And lastly, yeah, it's a, sp- it's a safe space for the org members because you know, uh, we use Discord to stream albums, for example, uh, we took time to stream Carly Rae Jepsen's dedicated side B. It's fun. It was a fun moment. And we were all screaming. So, yeah. And with trolls, yeah, we have human verification. If you're a non-member, you get asked like verification questions. Like, hey, what's your Facebook or what's your Twitter? So, uh, members of the committee, like, check if you're real or not. So for members, the orientation serves as a verifying moment because you get asked for your details. And yeah, we also use Google Drive apps and we have a Google calendar that has like all the dates of the discussions and we have a Google Sheet to keep track of members. Uh, we also have educational discussion library and all that. And yeah, okay. Let's go through this. Honorary mentions of like advanced practices. So there are actually book clubs from other cha- other chapters do book clubs or uh, reading lists. And then they do Kahoot games about what they read. Uh, Pandai Sining, which is on the Anak Bayan, they are currently doing a series where they are giving out open access audiobooks on SoundCloud. They also do trivia nights and galleries. And we also do watch parties sometimes if, it, if we're capable of doing it. And yeah. We still do. I hate this picture. Anyways, we're still yeah, we're still gearing up like new ways to spice up the online practices we have. Since yeah, we're still in the middle of this crisis. So yeah, you know what? 
we're not gonna conclude this. Okay, I'm G for the questions now. Yeah. So, hope you guys ask some questions. So we have a lot of questions that were submitted through Ooh. the poll everywhere. Uh, I can read out some of them. Okay, um, okay. I also sent them in the chat. All right, all right. Uh, first, what are your thoughts on performative activism? Performative? Oh, those like IG story things? I don't... Performative activism is a broad thing. But I'd like to say, hmm, these are baby steps. Yeah, like what I said uh, a while ago, it really takes a while for people to get to that uh, place where they can proudly say, hey, I want to contribute to creating social change. And if performative activism will help you get to that, I guess you can say, hey, why not? And I guess there's also a thing where in, we are literally in, in a pandemic right now and we're all quarantined. So yeah, performative activism, sometimes we, we cannot control that, especially right now where we're all confined to our phones and our gadgets. So yeah, and so performative activism can help. Let's just not, let's just be aware to not stick to that part of activism. Yeah. That's a great answer. I, um, another question that someone asked is, hello, I want to protest too like you, but I'm afraid of protesting. Since my parents told me that getting involved with political events or people can lead to trouble. What advice or thoughts do you have on that? Uh, if you can escape your home, Ew, bad influence. I'm a bad influence for that. If you can escape your home or properly convince your parents or your family members to go out on the streets, do it. However, yeah, like what I said about performative activism, we are in the middle of a pandemic right now. So I guess it is okay for you to stay at home, stay safe, uh, do the best you can, like sign the petitions. You... I was like skeptical about that, but then I realized I was like, wait, it's kind of working here. So, parang, yeah, your activism in this time usually, yeah, you can aside from like marching on the streets and yeah, it it, it is really scary. It is really scary. Uh, being confronted by like fifty plus policemen because of uh wanting to protest uh. In school, that was really scary. But then, yeah, sometimes you just have to have the guts to face your to face your enemies and stand up for what you believe in. And just because you're not marching on the streets right now and standing up to these enemies like face to face without social distancing, um, <clears throat> um, the police should police come on social distance, man. Uh, yeah, just because you're not doing. Uh, on ground work doesn't mean invalid your your online stuff is invalid because we're literally confined yeah again we're literally quarantined right now so yeah next question thank you um how to join Alakbay and Vito Cruz oh that's a good question oh Oh my god, is it a coincidence that we have weekly orientations on Thursday and that tomorrow is a Thursday? Oh my gosh, wow, what a that's such a beautiful coincidence. Anyways, joining on a bind Vita Cruz is easy. We have a bit.ly. We have a bit.ly, y'all. We do weekly orientations every Thursday. That's tomorrow. 2 p.m. So if you want to join Anakbay and Vito Cruz, just type in bit.ly slash join ABVC in all caps. If you want to join Kabataan Party, this DLSU, bit.ly slash join KPLVC in all caps. We do this weekly at 2 p.m. So if you can't do this Thursday, I'm going to have to bug you again and say, hey, what about next Thursday? And the Thursday after that. And the Thursday after that. So yeah. 
ELC students, you are more than welcome to do this. Join! It's fun! Grab it! Natuto ako magtagalog dito. Seryoso. Next question. I love so it. So ready. <laughs> um, there are some questions about recommended reads. What helped you form your guiding philosophy today? Uh, best reads on theory. Wait. This like, is about reading? <gasps> oh, okay. I saw yeah. it. Like reading materials, books, articles. Reading materials. Okay. One g- good read to start on this and if you're coming from the youth sector, if it if it hasn't been a required reading for you in your class, start reading The Miseducation of the Filipino by Renato Constantino and just start digging. That that essay, uh, The Miseducation of the Filipino, is one of the most like iconic iconic reads or shade towards uh neo neo colony education and how Americans uh American imperialism and how the American colonial system uh, screwed up Philippine education on purpose. So why did they do it on purpose? That's what the essay answers. And you start digging into like, if if everything bad that's happening is because of a system failure that was meant to happen, what do we do now? So. I think that's a good uh, springboard towards like answering bigger questions like what what is the solution to all these problems? So I suggest like attend if you do not want to read Amado Guerrero's Philippine Society and Revolution, which is super long. It is super long. Even I have not finished it. Uh, you can come to the educational discussions that happen that tackle the whole book but in a short amount of time, which is like uh, Philippine Society and Revolution abridged. So, so yeah. We also do that every Friday and Saturday. We, we split it into two. So, uh, if you sign up, if you sign up, come on, I was really ready for this. If you sign up with the bit.ly, uh, we'll, uh, we'll update you on the current schedules of discussions but yeah we split that discussion into two parts part one and part two is on a friday part three and part four is on a saturday so in order to stop brain frying and for you to ingest amada guerrero's writing more i suggest yeah uh attend those discussions try reading it on your own and what else uh influences I guess you can say Karl Marx, uh, Karl Marx's uh, Das Kapital. That is a long read. If you get to read that, I salute you, man. Uh, for more like non-economic related or like people who love the fault in our stars, it's a metaphor thing where, oh my gosh, wait, this is a metaphor? Uh, try reading John Paul Sartre. Oh, girl, I do not know how to say his name. S A T R E. S A T R E. What's that? S A T R E. That guy, John Paul. John Paul guy. Yeah, the John Paul guy. He's really good at explaining things uh, about like. Uh, societal failures. There's also Franz, Franz Kafka. If you're looking for Latin American people, the a good it's a metaphor for a systemic failure book is uh, one one hundred years of solitude by uh, Real Garcia Marquez. Uh, more uh, Filipino related ones. Uh, there's there's a book called The Quiet Ones by Glenn Diaz that helps you deep dive into to uh, the systemic failures brought by colonialism and how colon- how being a neo colony affects us so that's a good like book and it takes the perspective of call center agents who try to steal money since they're like uh, their call center thing is for a bank so the guy ends up stealing money from that because he just learns how because he doesn't have money to supply his family's needs. 
So it's a good like springboard for things. And usually, I, d- I like recommending stuff that doesn't directly relate to uh, uh, the polit- like facing the political situation. Because as a writer, writer bias though, I love creative expressions of like, we have a problem. So, so I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Also, academic journals. Uh, academic journals. Uh, who did that? <laughs> There's one academic journal that's really good, especially as a Catholic there. Uh, read up on liberation theology. Uh, for the Catholics out there, uh, liberation theology and the works of Saint Oscar Romero. Uh, they they're good springboards for like as Catholics, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to to act upon in a time of political stress? Uh, what else? Uh, for for starters, I guess the Hunger Games series. <laughs> try reading it. Come try reading the Hunger Games, the Hunger Games trilogy, with like. Pedagogy of the, the of the oppressed by Paula Freire. Try reading those both at the same time. Gag. So I guess yeah. For for other like direct, we ha- we live in a society. Books. Yeah, pedagogy. I, am I saying that right? Ah, uh, no words. Uh, yeah, Paula Freire. Uh, what is to be done by Vladimir Lenin? And yeah. I have so much book recommendations. Uh, follow my book reads. <laughs> my book reads. Good reads. Oh my god, I can't. I can't talk. I have. I have lacked energy. But yeah, I have a good reads. It's just my name. So yeah. Next question. I'm gonna change my Thank background. You so much. I'm gonna change my background. I remember reading the miseducation of the Filipino last year it was very mind-blowing so yeah it's just right? funny to say I think I it's a school this. requirement <laughs> yeah it's so, oh, so ironic too question. yeah sure uh, drop your question drop your question okay. so the question is do you think people are more concerned with not being perceived as racist than actually being anti-racist Perceived? I guess, yeah. There's so much, there's so much like implications about making a stand. Like, you can see this in, in like conflict theory, where you don't, in Karl Marx's conflict theory, right? Basically, that, that's the stick wherein there are two conflicting ideologies, and sometimes when those two ideologies clash, uh, Paul of Fier, like describes that that association with like revolutionary ideas and conformity. When he was like, a lot of people wouldn't want to be associated with radical or progressive ideas because the ruling class has created an education and culture wherein you have to conform to the continuous buildup of oppression so i guess yeah it's it's the perception of being anti-racist i i would like to believe that people wouldn't like to take a stand because they know that when they take that stand a lot there are a lot of consequences that come with that especially like currently uh philippine context uh yeah terror bill a lot of congressmen uh bilang yung wow tagalog okay bilang yung Kongreso natin, it's like you can consider mo siya bilang isang uh, rubber stamp or like uh, most of the people in Congress are pro administration. So if you were to conf- uh, go against that, you are getting a lot of a lot of like hate against you or like threats to change your mind. So yeah, it's more of the perception I think and like. I like to believe, but I guess there's some contradictions or uh, personal s- scenarios that can mess with that. So mostly, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to believe, ah, uh, nito 
it's not canon, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to believe it's more on perception and people not wanting to be perceived to be uh, anti, anti-ruling class or anti, anti-progressive ide- and, uh, pro-progressive ideology because there are a lot of implications on that. You can be branded a terrorist for doing that. So I don't want to be branded a terrorist. I can't even cook uh, hot dogs because I'm scared of oil splashing onto my face so yeah hope that answers your question and if y'all have other questions okay um i guess this is the last question um so what what's one advice you could give to um to someone who um like let's say want to participate in protests rallies Oh okay, this is this is fun. Um, one advice I'd give: forget that you're facing like one of the toughest elements of a fascist state. Cause I don't know, it's sad that protests get like monitored a lot by the police. Like it, you get desensitized. It's sad. It's sad that you get desensitized over police brutality. But yeah, I guess it's that, hey, gather up your strength, gather up your, gather up your trust into fighting for what you want to believe in and, be, and keep that strength and confidence because we believe nga na in this struggle, we are not really alone in this. You have so much people uh, the ruling class would like would want you to believe that you are only a silent minority. However, you do have you do have most, if not all, Filipinos again. Uh, most, if not all, Filipinos are there to stand with you. So it's not you know, It's not a matter of like, hey, what if I'm alone in this? I'm here to I'm here to confirm that you are not alone in this. Promise. That's I don't know, as a Leo who has who has words of affirmation and physical touch as a love language. So I love being around people. That becomes like my motivation. Like, hey, you're not alone in this. You are you are not a single person. You are a movement. A lot of people would back you up on this and they are ready to they're ready to fight for your right. To protest if something bad happens to you we got you we got you so so i guess it's that common common trust in c- collective systems that would like help you um, will like help you enforce that like strength and confidence to carry on so yeah it's cheesy but that's how <laughs> that's how i would like to perceive things and i hope that helps too and if protests really scare you, um, you can be part of the sidelines. If if protesting is not your thing or you're too scared to do it, uh, let uh, don't force yourself to do it. If you're too scared, it's okay. Uh, let's debunk the theory that activists only do protests, but we also do sideline work, such as. Uh, mass integrations, discussing with people. So if it's not your thing, uh, don't force yourself. But if you really want to do it, come on. I got you, I got you, I got you. So I got your back. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I think that was our last question. Thank you so much, Josh, for this great talk. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys for letting me do this. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I take these because, okay, context. I, I just write over, like, you know, the junk terrible happens, and then I just write over that. Uh, as, as the terrible happens, I just write over that. So, like, I have, like, default pictures of me doing this. So, yeah. So, if you still have questions, by the way, to everyone still here, if you have questions, slide into my Twitter or IG DMs. It's Josh V L N T. You can hit me up on Discord. My name, and I am not joking, my name is Mini Stuff Fried Chicken. I miss that. <laughs> and if you're cool, 
I have a letterbox Goodreads. Oh, I update I update my Goodreads with like book recommendations. So letterbox Goodreads Visco to Josh Valentin. So oh. Thank you guys for listening, by the way. And I knew it. I knew it. I was going to go over time. I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, thank you guys. Yay, we're done! <laughs> thank you.